I'm Roman Yossi of the National Predator. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. And before we get to the know-how stuff and hockey coverage, first let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're going to educate about the show. Well, that's when you can click on that merchandise tab. It's going to take you straight to our class. Classic logo t-shirt or pride logo t-shirt all the different special event t-shirts and all the gimmicks you've come to know and love and expect from the renegades of puck like socks throw pillows wall arts bed sets you know how it goes by now you can now fit your entire person your entire home and we would pretty appreciate if you would go ahead and do so after all we've sold out so that you can buy in social media is of critical importance to this operation so here's how you can support the renegades of puck you can find us on x you can also find us on instagram tiktok facebook we're on all of those different platforms whatever it is you prefer go ahead ahead and give us a follow and give us a like along those lines and then help us out on youtube thank you so much to all of our recent subscribers always welcoming in new renegades of puck to the trenches on our video channel on youtube get the latest episodes of renegades of puck tv all of our different breakdown segments our previews our recaps our interviews all of that right there on youtube it is just another great way that you can consume the product known as the renegades of puck podcast speaking of the audio of podcast you can find us thanks to the full press nhl network the full press predators podcast on numerous platforms like google stitcher spotify amazon just a couple right there as examples so just listen to the renegades of puck podcast on your preferred platform today stick taps love and respect for helping us go from local to global in 2023 and keep that momentum going here in the early portions of 2024 we are so incredibly appreciative of each and every one of you out there thank you so much stick taps love and respect for giving us a listen venmo is how you can support the show financially so just go to venmo and search renegades puck or scan the qr code that is currently on your screen every dollar goes a long way to helping this hockey operation so we really appreciate if you could spare a couple of those we're always building and upgrading and making changes here at the studio we're trying to make it the best broadcasting facility in the entirety of the hockey and podcasting landscape and we cannot do that without your generosity so thank you so much stick taps love and respect to each and every one of you who has sent along a donation again scan that qr code and you can make a donation to the renegades of puck today now listen i know it is time for the no has to hockey coverage so let me deliver the goods time for operation number 867 that's right time for show number 867 and at this moment, hockey history, the National Predators currently find themselves in fifth place in the Central Division, just on the outside of the playoffs, looking in. After 52 games skated, the National Predators are back from the All-Star break and now have a record of 27-23 and two. 56 points on the season has them two points behind fourth place St. Louis and has them nine points out of an automatic playoff qualifying spot of third. We'll update the entirety of the Central Division here momentarily. On home ice, which is where the National Predators will next game will take Take place that record of 14 13 and 0. The Preds have scored 158 goals on the season. They've given up 164. That's goal differential of minus six. The Nashville Predators next opponent is the New Jersey Devils. We'll talk about that matchup here in just a moment and really put the microscope on the numbers and the stats. But let's update you on the Central Division and the wild card standings and update at this time. The Dallas Stars currently find themselves in first place in the Central Division after 52 games skated. 32 14 and 6 has 70 points on their part of the ledger the avalanche are two points behind in second place with 68 the winnipeg jets have 67 points and are three points out of first place so dallas colorado winnipeg continue the three-team weave at the top of the central division as it looks like they are separating themselves from the pack at least for the time with only 30 games to go in the season though separating themselves from the pack by almost double digit points between third and fourth 67 points to 58 points so a nine point drop before you find st louis at 58 and then nashville at 56 and Minnesota at 51, and then Arizona is at 50 points, and the Chicago Blackhawks are in last place, 8th in 31 points on the season. So it appears we have an upper tier in the Central Division developing amongst the three-team weave that has going to probably continue on to the very end of the season. A middle of the pack seems to be developing with St. Louis and Nashville, 
possibly Minnesota and Arizona, but both of those teams have kind of fallen off the pace as of late. And the Chicago Blackhawks, the only team we can talk about, is not realistically being a part of the rest of the regular season plan. So the National Purse, 56 points, finds them in fifth place in the Central. But in the wild card race, it finds them two points out of the second wild card spot. The wild card as of this moment, L.A. at 58 points holds wild card one. St. Louis at 58 points holds wild card two. The National Purse on the outside looking in in the first slot with 56 points in Calgary. One point behind the Preds with 55 and surging as of late. Now, let's talk about the Nashville Predators, New Jersey Devils for the Nashville Predators. Once they wrap up this game against the Devils, they will finish up the three-game homestand against the Dallas Stars. That will take place on Thursday night. Back on the road Saturday in St. Louis. That is going to be a critical, important game. Two very critically important Central Division games in a row after this New Jersey game. So, do not get caught overlooking the Devils, even though you haven't seen them at all this season. And don't get caught in that trap. 220, the Preds are on the road in Vegas. 222 in LA. 224 in San Jose. That's part of a five-game road trip that obviously will have the National Predators out on the West Coast. Now, for the Predators and the Devils, this is the first of two regular season meetings. They won't meet again until just about the very end of the regular season schedule. On April the 7th, Preds will make their one stop of the year in New Jersey to check out the Devils. The Devils, at this point in time of the season, are 25-21-4. and 4. 54 points has them fifth place in the Metropolitan Division on the road, a respectable 14, 9, and 2 record. They've scored 169 goals. They've given up 177. They've got a goal differential of minus 8. In their most recent action, we go back to January the 25th, and it was a 3 to 2 loss at the Carolina Hurricanes on the 27th of January. It's a 3 loss at Tampa Bay Lightning on the 6th of February, coming out of their All Star break. It was a 5 to 3 win versus Colorado, and then on the 8th of February, a 5 to 3 loss versus Calgary, and most recently on February the 10th it was a 1-0 overtime loss at Carolina now the Devils will play on Monday versus the Seattle Kraken at home before having to jump on a plane and get here to Nashville for this game that's going to take place on Tuesday night at Bridgestone Arena now taking a look inside the matchup between these two teams the New Jersey Devils are scoring 3.38 goals per game that is ninth best overall in the NHL the Predators are generating 3 goals per game that is 18th best in the NHL the goals against category. New Jersey is giving up 3.52. That is 29th overall in the NHL. The Predators are giving up 3.15. That is 19th. In the shots for category, New Jersey 31.3 is 11th overall. And the National Predators generating 31 on net per game is 15th overall. Shots against both teams even at 30 apiece. Respectively, they rank 13th and 14th. It is the Devils coming out ahead on the ranking there in the tiebreaker. For the special teams and the power play, the Devils have a far superior power play than the Nashville Predators do at this point in the season. 24.2% conversion rate is ninth best in the NHL. 36 out of 149 opportunities. Nashville Predators are 19.1% conversion rate. That is 20th in the NHL. They are 35 out of 183. On the penalty kill, 79.5% for the New Jersey Devils is 18th. They've given up 32 power play goals against on the season. The Nashville Predators are killing off 75.9% of their shorthanded advantage opportunities. 27th in the NHL, 40 power play goals against. When it comes to each and every individual team, high skilled scores across the board. We like to talk about the top five for each team. Let's start with the updates on the Nashville Predators, the home team and their stats. Philip Forrest working now at 25 goals and 28 assists for 53 points on the season coming out of the All-Star break and keeping some of that momentum going that he seemed to pick up last weekend. Also, did he pick up a whole new attitude? We're going to talk about that. Captain Roman Yossi has 11 goals and 36 assists for 47 points. O'Reilly has 18 goals and 26 assists for 44 points on the season. Nyquist is at 12 goals and 28 assists for 40 points on the season. And Tommy Novak tied for fifth on the team with Colton Sisson, 25 points. Novak's breakdown is 9 plus 16. Over on the New Jersey Devils side of the ledger, it's Brat, 20 goals, 35 assists for 55 Five points. Jack Hughes, 15 goals and 30 assists for 45 points. Toffoli, 21 and 13 for 34. Heeshear, 14 and 18 for 32. Luke Hughes at eight goals, 18 assists for 26 points. In net for the Devils, the anticipated goaltending matchup, Vanacek, 17, 9 and 3, but it all depends on how their back to back goes between Monday and Tuesday. Vanacek, 17, 9 and 3, and 8, 9, no save percentage, 3.18. 
goals against average. UC Soros 20, 19, and 2 on the season. A 902 save percentage, a 2.97 goals against average, and 2 shutouts on the year. For the Nashville Predators, every point that's remaining is critical as they're on the outside looking in, and they are just at the cutoff line. So this interconference matchup cannot be taken lightly. Do not get caught looking ahead to Thursday versus Dallas or Saturday in St. Louis. This is a critically important game against the New Jersey Devils team that is not exactly playing their best hockey as of late. So the Predators need to seize on the momentum of their last game and keep that rolling coming out of the All-Star break and continue gaining points in the standings especially when it comes to these eastern conference matchups that's got you all set up for the Preds and the Devils at Bridgestone Arena on a Tuesday night now let's go back and talk about the National Purge previous game it's Reverb Sports full game recap it's coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast hockey players are as unique as the game itself and your uniform should be tailored to fit you Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor from shells bags warm ups hats hoodies branding and more let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor and don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey Rebirth Sports on Facebook Twitter and Instagram Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to February the 10th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were finally back on the ice coming out of the All-Star break versus the Arizona Coyotes. Head coach Andrew Burnett deploys lines and combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Novak, Lass, and Tomasino. Trenton, Sissons, and Smith make up your third line. Sherwood, McCarran, Evangelista make up your fourth line. Yossi and Barry are your top defensive pairing. McDonough and Shen, Luzon, and Carey round out the defensemen. UC Saros gets the start in net at Bridgestone Arena. We are just 50 seconds into the game, and it's UC Saros coming up with a save on Krauss. It's the first shot on goal of the game at the 203 mark. Uh, the first period, UC Saros coming up with a save on O'Brien, 347. Saros, another save on Moser at the 433 mark of the first period. UC Saros back to work again, coming up with a save on Dermott. UC Soros doing the hard work in the first five minutes of the game. At 445, Ingram comes up with his first save of the game. That's on Philip Forsberg. That's the first shot on goal for the National Person. 507 of the first. Kraus hits the post for Arizona at the 657 mark. Uh, the first period, it's Ingram coming up with a save. And the captain, Roman Yossi, teams exchanging chances now. 854, Soros, a save on Keller at the 1049 mark of the first period. UC Soros coming up with a save on Zucker at the 1140 mark. Soros, another save, this time on Kraus. Our first goal of the game comes at the 1228 mark. Mark of the first period. It's Ryan O'Reilly getting his 18th goal of the season. It was Philip Forsberg with the feed from below the goal line to the side of the slot area. And the shot pinballs in the most incredible way. It goes off of the post, off of Connor Ingram, off of the crossbar, off of Connor Ingram, and then into the net. Just one of the most improbable pinball shots you're ever going to see. But this is the NHL, so something different happens every game. O'Reilly's 18th gets the Preds on the board with a 1 0 lead at the 12 28 mark. Uh, the first period, but the celebration doesn't last very long. Because at 13-10 of the first period, it's Dermott with his second goal of the season. As the Preds' D collapses low, it allowed just all the time and the space at the top of the zone to take a good shot through some heavy traffic. That ties the game up at one apiece at the 13-10 mark. Uh, the first period. We'll go to 14-17 now. The first period, Ingram coming up the save on Philip Forsberg at 15-14 of the first period. Our first penalty of the game. It's Captain Roman Yossi off to the box. Two minutes for high sticking. Cole Smith would do the heavy relentless penalty killing here two to three takeaways and a shot on goal all within one sequence in the coyote zone very impressive effort that's bringing the jam in a shorthanded situation in a most no half step away uc stars would come over the save on balamaki but that would be it for the arizona coyotes on that power play at 17 21 on uh, the first period the preds would get their first power play opportunity when Dermot would go off to box two minutes for holding the stick the preds though would not generate a single shot on net as a matter of fact the power play would look pretty awful we hit the end of the first period with the Coyotes out shooting the National Predators 12 to 10 we do have a 1-1 hockey game doesn't take long on the clean sheet of the second period. Only 21 seconds for our first action. It's Connor Ingram because with the save on Cole Smith is 140 mark. It's UC Saros coming up with the save on O'Brien. At the 306 mark of the second period, it's Connor Ingram coming up with the save on Tyson Barry. 355 sees UC Saros come up with the save on Keller's deflection. Keller, of course, has had great success against the Predators. This is the 437 mark of the second period. It's Ingram coming up with the save on Philip Forsberg plus the follow-up by Nyquist. Great scoring opportunity here by the Nashville Predators now. At 5.32 of the second period, the Predators are going to get another power play opportunity as Dersey is going to be off the box. Two minutes for cross-checking, but 
just like the first Predators power play, just not a lot happening right here. The Preds would, again, not get a single shot on goal during the full two-minute man advantage. At the 7.48 mark, we just played only a few seconds of five-on-five five hockey. We're already going back to special teams, and we are really going to special teams here. At the 7.48 mark of the second period, it's McMain off the box. Two minutes for hooking. And then, immediately, it's Philip Forsberg off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. Now, we have a four-on-four, four, but then it's the Arizona Coyotes picking up a bench minor for too many men on the ice. That puts the Predators back on the ever-unusual four-on-three power play, but that's when Glass picks up a penalty. He's off to the box. Two minutes for tripping, but wait, 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 wait. We are not done yet. Hayton then is also going to pick up a penalty during the special teams exchange. This is going to be two minutes for high sticking. Now, the next part of the file tree, the captain, Roman Yossi, is something different than a penalty. It is a goal for the Nashville Predators. His 11th of the season comes on a heavy one-timer from the right circle. Good setup by the Preds. Power play right here. Puts the Preds back on top. 2-1. to one. We finally return to some five-on-five five hockey at the 12-31 mark of the second period. We find UC Saros coming up with a save on Cooley at the 15-12, 15-14 mark of the second period. UC Saros coming up with a save on Keller at 16-24 of the second. UC Saros coming up with a save on Michelli. 17-32. Luzon. He's off the box two minutes for interference and this is going to give Gunther an opportunity to just stop the puck in a most glorious way he had so much time so much space he was able to hand that heater of a pass with his skate put it on the blade and then pick top shelf giving the Arizona Coyotes their second goal of the game for Gunther his fourth goal of the season we have a tie game here going into the second intermission Shots on goal after two. Arizona's managed to get 12 shots on goal in both periods. They now have 24. The Preds have 19 for the game, picking up nine in the second period overall. We flip over to the back of the sheet, and we pick ourselves up the beginning of the third period. We go 137 in, and it's two Cesars coming up with a save on Michelli at 145 of the third period. It's Valimaki getting his second goal of the season. It was a long shot that also pinballed two sets of pants on the way into the net. So the Nashville Predators get a pinball goal, and the Arizona Coyotes get a more traditional pinball style goal right here now Arizona leads three to two in this game at the four minute mark of the third period it's Cole Smith off to the box two minutes for interference and unfortunately for the Nashville Purs it's Nick Schmaltz converting on the power play for the Arizona Coyotes with his 14th goal of the season it was incredibly strong passing by the Arizona Coyotes in the Preds defensive zone that led to Schmaltz getting the easy finish. The Arizona Coyotes lead 4-2 to two now here in the third period. At the 419 mark, just after Arizona takes a two-goal lead, it's going to be Bukestad off the box. Two minutes for hooking. Connor Ingram's going to come up with a save on Philip Forsberg. Then Connor Ingram's going to come up with a save on Ryan O'Reilly, plus the jam follow-up on the rebound. It is going to be Tommy Novak before the end of the power play, converting for the National Birds his ninth goal of the season. It was a top-shelf finish. It was, in fact, a snipe. Tommy Novak, you know the name. All he does is make plays. Arizona still leads 4-3, to three, but the Preds gaining some momentum off this power play goal. At the 723 mark of the third period, Ingram coming up with a save on McDonough. At the 927 mark of the third period, Ingram coming up with a save on McDonough again, but this time he has Philip Forsberg crashing and following up behind. Another save for Ingram leads to a scrum after the whistle as Philip Forsberg continues to be ornery in this game. That same Philip Forsberg just 30 seconds later at 959 of the third period is going to pick up his 25th goal of the season. It was O'Reilly's shot off of Ingram's shoulder lands in the blue paint and Forsberg slams it home not only winning the battle but physically dominating that battle and getting that puck into the net. Forsberg's 25th goal of the season ties this game at four apiece. You could just tell the Nashville Predators were just buzzing around the zone the last couple of minutes. Now we, in a tie game, everything resets. Things start to slow down a little bit. That's why we find 11:48. Ingram coming up with a save on Sissons at 13.43. Ingram comes up with a save on Philip Forsberg at 17.08. Ingram comes up with a save on Glass. 18.32. Ingram a save on Glass again. And then we go to 19.54. Just six seconds left in regulation. Susie Saras coming up with his final save of regulation on Moser. We hit the end of regulation. Each team is awarded a point. The Nashville Predators for the game outshoot Arizona 36-30 to after the shots on goal being 24 to 
19 in favor of Arizona after the second. The Preds, 36 shots on goal in total for regulation. Impressive third period. The Preds with a two-goal comeback. Let's go to the overtime and decide this final point. It is 28 seconds in. It's the captain, Roman Yossi, hitting the post with the big ping, looking to end this one. The National Purves hit the post numerous times on the evening. This one as dramatic as can be. At 112 of the overtime session, it's UC Saros coming up and saying, Amicelli's backhand and the follow-up jam. Only awarded one shot on goal right here, but UC Saros had to be strong. Wrong, holding that, waiting for the whistle. Nashville Predators would reset, get the puck, and it would be Ryan McDonough finishing this game off with his second goal of the season. It was Tommy Novak who did the hard work. He carried the puck from the neutral zone, carried it down along the wall, fought through a hard check, won that battle, went behind the net, comes out the other side, feeds the slot, and Ryan McDonough perfectly positioned, stick down, waiting for the play, and gets his first ever overtime game winning goal. Ryan McDonough, second of the season, gives the National Pros a 5-4 to four victory in overtime at Bridgestone Arena. The National Pros out, shoot the Arizona Coyotes, 37-31 to 31 for this game, and the National Pros needed this one in such a big way. A two-goal comeback on home ice in front of a really big crowd on a Saturday night. Good, good stuff for the team. Coming out of the All-Star break, I was concerned. Would they still be weary? Would they be better than they were when they went into the All-Star break? Well, by the third period, they got their legs under them, and they really got things going. We've got so much more to talk about in this game. Analysis coming up after the break. But that's the Rebirth Sports full game recap right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Damn, it feels good to be back in the bunker and in the trenches with each and every one of you Renegades of Puck. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy owner-operator of Strong Style Fitness, and that's me and my training assistant Rizzo, and we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar-inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. UC Soros was 27 out of 31 in this game. Four goals against, and you know what? He was really strong early. The first four minutes, 45 seconds, he was the only netminder that touched a puck. National Predators a little slow getting started coming out of the All-Star break, a little slow getting their skates underneath them, but we all know they did get their skates underneath them by the third period. So he was good early. He was better late, keeping the National Predators in that game once it was tied up and then helping the Preds secure that extra point. The D did not not necessarily help him a lot. First of all, too many penalties against by the Nashville Purs, too many special team situations for UC Saros to end up facing. And the D was having some difficulties collapsing and also tipping pucks in off of pant legs. So for the Nashville Purs, UC Saros, I felt played a better game than the box score may indicate. An 871 save percentage would indicate an incredibly poor performance, but he comes away with the victory. And again, his best work was early in the game in the first period and late in the third period in overtime once the National Predators came back and tied the game up. I thought UC Saros was actually okay in this game despite what the box score might say. Sometimes that's where the numbers can be deceiving. The eye test and what actually happened factually uh, does matter and UC Saros did not play as bad as the numbers might indicate. Philip Forsberg had a goal. He had an assist. He had two points. He had eight shots on goal and this is this is really why I put Philip Forsberg first. There was a, a lot of different options I could have put here for the first topic, but I wanted to discuss that new attitude. Listen, had a great time at the All-Star Weekend. He obviously excelled. He got a whole lot of headlines, a whole lot of chatter, a lot of TV time, and he played quite well and performed quite well in the uh, entirety of the All-Star Weekend, what he was uh, able to and allowed to participate in. Uh, but Forsberg came back, and it was a little bit more snarl to his game. Now, listen, I have been critical at times. It really seems Philip Forsberg. Forsberg was having more fun and less fight. He wasn't necessarily driving to 
and then it was hard, but that all seemed to flip in last night's game. I don't know who whispered in his ear. Or I don't know what reality he came to uh, over the All-Star break, but Philip Forsberg came back with a whole new attitude. He was creating scrums. He was jamming away at the puck. He was being incredibly difficult to play against, and he was also adding that high skill element and really trying to take it to the Coyotes in this game. If Philip Forsberg can continue on that level of intensity the rest of the season, uh, there's no doubt that he's going to get to 40 goals this season. He may break his personal record and maybe the franchise record. So we will see. But Philip Forsberg has clearly come back from the All-Star break with a whole new attitude. That first game revealed a whole lot. That was more snarl than you've seen from Philip Forsberg. It is, after all, February when the calendar flips. The Prince goes nuts. So, O'Reilly, the next point we want to talk about. One goal, one assist in this game for two points. Also, six shots on goal, three block shots, 24-53 of total time on ice. Again, just an incredibly professional hockey game. What a great veteran Ryan O'Reilly is. And, and it's going to be the first of a couple of points where we talk about incredible veterans on this team right now. Ryan O'Reilly uh, performed at a very high level in this game. He got the first goal of the game, and he was a difference maker throughout the entirety of this game, filling up the stack columns across the board, leading in multiple categories. Two points in the game, six shots on goal, three block shots, 24-13 time on ice, 5-34 on the power play, even 58 seconds of penalty kill time. Ryan O'Reilly did it all in this game. He stepped up and performed big time right alongside with Philip Forsberg. And then you got to also add in their line mate Nyquist, who picked up two assists in this game as well. Tommy Novak, a goal and an assist, two points in this game. He's now tied for fifth on the team in scoring. That's set up in overtime. Uh, listen. This is incredible. Look, he was a huge factor in the comeback by scoring a goal. He got the two-goal comeback going with that power play goal, and that was impressive. But I want to spend way more of the analysis time on Tommy Novak talking about the play in overtime as he carried the puck from the neutral zone over the blue line, down the wall, fought right through a hard check along the wall, maintained possession, kept his momentum going, knew what he wanted to do seemingly before he got below the face off circle on that wall takes it behind the net curls sends it to the slot McDonough perfectly open for the game winning goal in overtime so Tommy Novak all he does is make plays that was an incredible individual effort as the three on three overtime usually requires a pretty much an incredible individual effort that's why I'm not the biggest fan of the three on three overtime but I do love when moments like this happen Tommy Novak carries the puck fights through it and a world class distribution service to Ryan McDonough for the extra point in this game and the wins Tommy Novak I thought was highly impressive and now is tied for fifth on the team in score and seems to be trending in the right direction, breaking out of his offensive funk that he was in. And that's great news for the Nashville Predators because he heated up last year about this time as well. Uh, Captain Roman Yossi also with two points in this game, a goal and an assist 26-52 in total time on ice. That led the Nashville Predators in total time on ice. And the Captain Roman Yossi was buzzing all over the rink again. He has been highly impressive as of late. And there were people starting to question whether his offense Offensive numbers were going to get back to the levels that they were before. I can tell you right now, uh, the Predators are 52 games into the season. The captain, Romeo Yossi, has 47 points right now, uh, and he is on fire. He's continuing to play good hockey. He's continuing to coming out of the All-Star break right where he left off, and he is now second on the team and scoring only six points behind Forsberg. 11 goals on pace now for probably high teens in goals, which would be a very impressive season overall. And assists, it looks like he's going to get to over 50 assists without too much of a problem here. So for the captain, Roman Yossi, he's going to have those numbers back exactly where I expect. He led his squad to a victory last night in a very difficult circumstance. A huge two-goal comeback in the third period and then winning it in overtime. Great job by Roman Yossi leading his squad. Also, we have to. I saved it. Ryan McDonough. I couldn't decide if I want to talk about him first or last in this one. I want to talk about Forsberg's new attitude, and I want to talk about that old dog, Ryan McDonough. One goal, one assist for two points. Ryan McDonough with two points. The offensive dynamo, Ryan McDonough, winning the game for the National Predators in overtime. You know what? Good job by the coaching staff for putting McDonough 
kind of out there. Sometimes in a three-on-three, you have a tendency to shorten the bench to a point where you're strangling your best players and you're not giving them enough time to catch their breath or breathe. And Ryan McDonough out there getting the opportunity, taking advantage of it. He did exactly what every hockey player in the universe is supposed to do. He followed the play in. He went to the net. He kept his stick down and he was ready to shoot the puck. And Tommy Novak set him up perfectly. Ryan McDonough had to finish the play, though, and he did that with an expert snipe for his first ever career overtime game winning goal. Uh, Stick taps to Ryan McDonough. That's a hell of a moment for a player who's played as many games and as many years as he has to win that one for the Predators. And the Predators, you know what? I thought that they looked really, really strong. And there's something we'll talk about in the box score coming up that revealed why the Predators suddenly got some more jump, got some more jam, and were able to come back from down two goals and seemingly dominate the Coyotes in the final 20 minutes of this game when they were unable to do so for the first 40. We'll talk about that next when we talk about the box score. First, we've got to hear from our great friends, Stripe Digital Solutions. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. Let's talk about the good cold hard numbers known as the box score, your goal scorers for this game. The National Predators had five goals in this game, five different goal scorers. Philip Forsberg picks up a goal, Tommy Novak, Ryan O'Reilly with goals, the captain Roman Yossi and Ryan McDonough each with goals, three goals from the forwards, two goals from the defensemen. When it comes to assists, Gus Nyquist with two assists in this game. That paced the Nashville Predators. Also forwards picking up assists were Philip Forsberg, Tommy Novak, and Ryan O'Reilly on the defensive side of things. Barry picks up an assist. The captain, Romeo C, picks up an assist. And also Ryan McDonough picking up an assist in this game. Shots on goal. Philip Forsberg, a dominant force in this game. Eight shots on goal, but he did put one in the net, and that's the most important thing. Six shots on goal for Ryan O'Reilly. Four shots on goal for Ryan McDonough. Again, that offensive dynamo, Ryan McDonough. Blocked shots on the forward side of things. Ryan O'Reilly had three in this game. Alex Carrier had three. Luzon had two in this game. When it comes to the physical component of things, and this is something I wanted to definitely highlight and talk about, uh, Sherwood had five hits in this game. And only 829 in total time on ice. Sherwood had five hits. Wanted to make sure I pointed that out. Uh, Four hits for Luzon. And only two hits for Luke Shen. But it wasn't about the number of hits. It was about the quality and about the time of the hits in this game. Uh, Luke Shen absolutely delivered one of the biggest open ice hits of the season for the Nashville Predators. The bench clearly reacted. More energy in the legs from that moment forward, and the Nashville Predators came back from down two goals to win this thing in overtime. So there is no doubt that there is a direct correlation between the hit by Luke Shen and then the comeback for the Nashville Predators. Shen hasn't been the most impressive player for the Nashville Predators this season. And there are a lot of people that would like to just forget that he was ever signed by this team would like to just move on from it. But in this particular moment, Luke Shen may have really earned his first gold stripe as a Nashville Predator because that hit got his team fired up and inspired. Then they came back and won this game, and beating the Arizona Coyotes in this game at Bridgestone Arena is critically important. The head-to-head matchup going 0-3 and and giving up all six points on the seasons would have been a tragedy for the Nashville Predators in the playoff race coming up. The Preds pick up that extra point. Impressive stuff right there. That hit by Luke Chen that deserved a little bit of time to be talked about right here. Let's go to time on ice leaders. It is Ryan O'Reilly at 24-13. Gnats Nyquist at 22-34. Philip Forsberg at 22 minutes. Roman Yossi led the team in total time on ice in 26-52. He's the only defenseman to go over the 20-minute mark. McDonough was the only one even close. 1956 In the power play, 
play time on ice. Power play went two for six. The special teams was absurd in this game, especially that sequence in the second period. The Predators power play officially two for six in this game. It was 544 power play time on ice for Philip Forsberg, 534 for O'Reilly, 439 for Glass. The captain, Roman Yossi, 521 in power play time on ice and Tyson Barry, 350. And when it comes to the penalty kill, the National Predators were two of four, the highest penalty kill. And again, these were weird. Some of them were very short. The amount of time on some of them was very bizarre. 227 in total penalty kill time on ice for McDonough, 202 for Trenton, 144 for Alex Carrier. A couple of the other numbers falling out of the box score to bring you up. Note 53.3 face-off winning percentage for the Nashville Predators. Good news right there. Always good to be above 50%. I'd like to see the Predators really tick that number back up a little bit. They're on the positive side of it coming out of the All-Star break. That's good news. 27 hits is a nice number big time right there. 12 block shots for the Predators. Six takeaways, 13 giveaways, though. I think for the takeaways, six uh, out of six takeaways, I think three of the takeaways were Cole Smith on that one penalty kill shift. The 13 giveaways, uh, that is a lot. That's sloppiness with the puck. Some of that came early in the game. And again, it took a while for the Preds to find their game underneath them. That's it for the box score. And I'm going to go right into that. Uh, it was a rested team. And you know what? They, it did take them a little bit of time. It was a, a very, very slow first five minutes of the game for the Predators. But UC Sarox was there. Just backstopped them. Keep things under control. And once they finally started getting their skates under them. And it really was the Shen hit that was kind of the igniter of the energy stepping up to a different level. The Predators were getting into this game. And it was 2-2. Two to two, But then they found themselves kind of sloppily giving up those two goals early in the third period and then it was immediately flipping a switch and turning it on and, and just dominating the third period. So the Predators finally got their skates under them coming out of the All-Star break. It's great that it happened before the end of this game. They're able to come back. It was a Impressive two-goal comeback on home ice in front of a home crowd and a big-time overtime win to come out of the All-Star break and officially cut the ribbon on the playoff race that we're going to continuously talk about from now until the end of the season. So the Preds, they stay active in the race. They pick up those two points, and it was a good thing to see. They did look like a different team. O'Reilly looked rested. Forsberg looked like he had a whole new attitude coming back from the All-Star break, and there were other Predators out there on the rink who also looked like their legs might have been renewed, reinvigorated. Remember, this is a team populated with a lot of young players, and for a lot of young players, an 82-game schedule is an incredible incredibly incredibly intense burden for them physically mentally and spiritually so they're also adapting to that getting through the rookie wall and fighting on to the playoff stretch that's going to motivate everybody and it's going to make everything a whole lot different more exciting over the final 30 games of the season if national prayers are continuously involved in the playoff race uh, you know what? That's going to do it for the Nashville Predators coverage in this one. Arrested team looked really good. I'm curious to see what they're going to look like about against New Jersey. I don't want a letdown game and an overlook game because of the huge games coming up against Dallas and then at St. Louis on Saturday. Those are important games, but this New Jersey game is just as important because the Preds are two points out of a wild card spot right now and two points are available against the New Jersey Devils. So they need to go ahead and seize those points where possible. I want to take you on the way out, Renegade gates of puck to the nashville spartans versus the buffalo stampede from friday night my 45th all-time game on the headset for the nashville spartans let's take you now to nolensville tennessee stick taps love and respect renegades i'm your host and captain crazy charlie sonye will let me close the show out from the spartans arena I'm Charlie Sonny, voice of the Nashville Spartans, coming to you from the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena on a rainy winter Friday evening here in the Middle Tennessee area. The Nashville Spartans are back home to take on the Buffalo Stampede. The Nashville Spartans currently, after 40 games, skated have a record of 32-7-1, 65 points, has them three points behind the first place Metro Jets in second place in the Great Lakes Division. It's the first of two final weekends to wrap up the regular season before for the playoffs here at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena, Nashville Spartans have already clinched their playoff spot, and they've done that largely behind Kyle Flynn. 23 goals, 51 assists for 74 points on the season. That's 11th in the USPHL premier. Ronan Keenan is 15th overall in the USPHL and scoring with 31 goals, 42 assists for 73 points. And the captain, Austin McCauley, is 18th overall with 71 points on the season. Don't forget Daniel Duzek being 16-6-1 with a 2.18 goals against average and a 918 save percentage. 
The Nashville Spartans first of two against the Buffalo Stampede tonight at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. Come on inside and join us on the voice of the Nashville Spartans, Charlie Sonia. Swords up, prepare for glory. And welcome in, everybody, to the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena Nashville Spartans Hockey tonight. Welcoming in the Buffalo Stampede. I am the voice of the Nashville Spartans, Charlie Sonny. Welcome to the Nashville Spartans on Flow Hockey. Spartans come into tonight's action, the Great Lakes Division, in second place after 40 games played. A record of 32, 7 1, 65 points. That's some three points behind the first place Metro Jets. Garrett wheels through the offensive zone, carries it to the middle of the ice. Look to fire, and that puck is into the net. Good survey by Durrett. He puts the puck into the net. Spartans, 1-0 lead. Buffalo turned aside. The Spartans exit out of the zone with Caraman and McCauley. McCauley chips it into the net. That is one impressive two-on-one rush right there. Finished off by the captain, Austin McCauley. And it's to the side of the net, and it is in. What an impressive pass, impressive effort. That's going to be Kyle Flynn off of the diagonal feed from the captain, Austin McCauley. The Spartans lead 3-0. It's going to be skated out by Chisholm all the way through the neutral zone. Hands it off to Flynn. Flynn dangles through the offensive zone, and the Spartans put the puck in the net again. A nice dangle right there, working with the defense to get in deep for the fourth goal of the night. Clean with it, look to set up the breakup. First pass, clean right through the zone to Caraman. That's going to give Caraman a chance to go straight to the net. Caraman tucks the puck in, and that's going to be a goal for the Spartans. Speed and separation kills, and it leads to the fifth goal of the game for the Nashville Spartans. Going one on four, instead decides to wheel, turn back, tends it over to Wolfenbarger, who puts the puck into the net. Now that's actually Kyle Flynn on the secondary scoring opportunity, putting the rebound back into the net. Of the long shot from out of the point, Spartans now lead 6-1. to one. Buffalo looking to break over the line with one minute to go on their power play. Turns it over to Karaman. Karaman around the defense. Karaman's got an opportunity for the shorthanded goal. And Karaman goes ahead and puts that puck into the net. Karaman on the backhand, shorthanded for the Nashville. Spartans finishes the playoff. The defender got turned around, and it was all over from there. That's going to be Karaman moving the puck in. Spartans have multiple opportunities to score right here, and that's going to be Flynn putting the puck in the net. Yet again, crashing hard on the weak side for the Spartans' eighth goal of the game. Good tie up off the draw. The Spartans get wing support, and they're able to take the puck away. Thomas Durant over the blue line, looks to slow things down. Good chip right there. Spartans come away with another goal. That's going to be Gino and Delicato at the back post, chipping that puck home for the Spartans. McCauley now looking to step in, steps around one defender, makes the pass across the slot. Spartans going back to the back post, and that's going to be McCauley putting the puck in the net yet again. What a red-hot period for this Nashville Spartans offense, led by the captain, Austin McCauley. 10-1 in favor of the Spartans. Spartans looking to get another offensive opportunity right here. Keenan fires the puck, looking for the redirect at the side of the net. By McCauley, could not quite connect. McCauley holds, holds, sends it back to the blue line. Long shot looking for another redirect, and Chris Free gets that redirect. At the front of the net, the Spartans are on the board again. Keenan uses the long reach to pick that pass off. Skates towards the net, takes it to the net, drives hard. And the puck is now in the net. Initially stopped by Lucas Prince. Followed up by Karaman. Rebound goal for the Nashville Spartans. Karaman's got four in this game. Collie McCauley hands it off again to Karaman. Karaman over to Flynn. Flynn looks to close the distance to the net. He does so, gets in close range, and puts the puck in the net. Kyle Flynn with the 13th goal of the game for the Spartans. Lucky 13 goes to number 71. Slow things down as we quickly head to just five minutes to go. 
here in regulation. Karaman getting a little too fancy with the puck right there. He gets some support from Austin McCauley, who now is driving towards the net with speed, and he'll finish that play off for another goal. Austin McCauley, the captain of the Nashville Spartans, makes it 14-2. Buffalo dumps the puck down one more time. The Spartans are going to get there. Duncan Chisholm is going to get it, send it across to Keenan in just a couple of seconds ago. Keenan over the blue line. He'll look to go to the net one last time. Instead, he'll opt just to take it to the corner and let time expire. Classy move by Ronan Keenan right there to take the puck to the corner. You know he wanted to get on the score sheet before the end of this one. 14-2 is your final. Nashville Spartans pick up the victory over the Buffalo Stampede tonight. I'm Charlie Sonny, a voice of the Nashville Spartans, and the Spartans just completed a 14-2 victory over the Buffalo Stampede here at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. The team was paced by the captain, McCauley. Two goals, six assists for eight points, now 79 points on the season. Tied for the team lead with Kyle Flynn, who picked up four goals and one assist for five points in this game. Don't forget about the performance by Sean Caraman. Four goals, three assists. Seven points in this game. So your point leaders just for this game. McCauley with eight. Carolyn with seven. Flynn with five. The Nashville Sparks come away with the 14-2 victory over the Buffalo Stampede. Maintain their position in second in the Great Lakes Division and keep putting the pressure on the Metro Jets. Same two teams tomorrow night right here. Same location. Same puck drop time. The only difference is it's not going to be a cold and rainy Friday night. It's going to be a cold and rainy Saturday night. Look forward to seeing you out here at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena or live on Flow Hockey. I'm Charlie Sonny, voice of the Nashville Spartan. Swords up, prepared for glory.